Good day, my name is Jörg Johansson. Here at DTU, I have the responsibility of leading research projects that focus on power system stability and control, especially in systems that have a high share of the power production based on wind energy. This is the first lecture out of two that addresses the influence of fluctuating wind speed at wind farms on power system frequency and the ability of the system to control the frequency. In this first lecture, we will address uh, frequency in power system, that is what causes system frequency to change. Also, how to ensure that we can keep a stable frequency in the system. And then at last, we want to take a look at how fluctuations of active power impact the system frequency. And then in the subsequent lecture, we'll turn our focus towards the wind farm and take a look at several system properties there that uh, reduce the impact of wind fluctuations when it comes to system frequency. The learning objectives for this lecture are defined as follows. That is, a student that meets the lecture's learning objectives should be able to explain why it's of importance to maintain steady frequency in power systems, describe why electric power systems may change, and which fundamental equations describe how the frequency changes. Also, explain the basic principle for power system frequency control in power systems, and at last reflect upon how fluctuations of active power injection influences the inertial response and, the, and when those fluctuations begin to interfere with the frequency control in the system. If we start by taking a look at frequency in electric power system, then we are interested in, in that because for a satisfactory operation of power systems, we need to have a frequency that is kept nearly constant. And the reason for that is that this, this ensures that our AC motors, that is both asynchronous and synchronous motors, they operate at constant speed then. In fact, if the frequency varies too much and it gets too low, we can risk that motors begin to stall, and this can lead to a cascade of outages or, or, or stalling and lead to a severe stability problems. So it's of fundamental importance that we control the frequency and try to keep it close to the system's nominal value. The frequency is dependent on the active power balance described by the equation of motion, which is listed here. Equation of motion states that the moment of inertia times the angular velocity uh, of the machines, or the frequency, times the uh, angular acceleration equals the mismatch between the input mechanical power, PM, to all of the generators in the system, and the electrical output of all of the generator, which covers both the system load and losses. If we have a mismatch between those powers, the mechanical power and the electrical output power, then the machine will either accelerate or decelerate. And the reason for that is that if you take a look at the equation for the kinetic energy that is stored in the generator's rotating masses, which is given here, half times the moment of inertia times the angular velocity squared, then from this we can see that the frequency uh, squared is proportional to the kinetic energy. So when we have an imbalance, for example, let's consider the case where the electrical loading is greater than the input mechanical power that comes into the system, then the energy that's missing to supply the load is taken from the, uh, these rotating masses and the kinetic energy there. And that's why the frequency declines in those situations. If it was the other way around, where the mechanical power was in excess of the electrical power, then this excess energy would be stored as kinetic energy and the frequency would increase. So, for example, if we lose a generator, um, then we could see a response like this. So here we have simulation of a generator outage. And actually, this, these are measurements taken at one point, at the terminal of one specific generator in the system. The measurements could look different if we took them at a, a different generator or the third generator. So they do not completely follow along. 
And if we plot all the energy in the system, we can see that there are some other dynamics involved. But what we are interested in when we talk about frequency is kind of this mean frequency, as this one reflects this total balance between the mechanical input power, total mechanical input power to the system, and the counteracting electrical output of the generators. The good thing about the frequency is that this is kind of a, a common factor throughout the system. That means a change in active power demand at one point is reflected uh, throughout the system by a change in frequency. And this ensures that here in this situation, that frequency control can actually kick in and adjust and re-establish this balance between those opposing forces, uh, which eventually leads to that the frequency stabilizes, as we see here. But let's take a closer look at frequency control and how that's carried out in power systems. So many generators uh, supply power into the power system. And that's why we need to have some means provided so that we can allocate, allocate this change in demand among the generators in the system. And for that purpose, we use uh, governors, that is, we have speed governors on the generating units, and this provides the primary speed control function. The objective of the governor is to measure the frequency. It measures the shaft speed here on our generator. So its generator is driven by a turbine, which converts uh, steam or water into mechanical power or mechanical torque, which then uh, rotates the generator and produces the electricity. So the generator measures the speed because the speed is indication of that we have a power imbalance in the system. And then this governors act upon a, a valve or a gate to adjust how much steam or water is let through the turbine. So in that way we can control uh, the speed of the, the generators in the system. And then to make sure that the burden of a disturbance or burden of a load change is allocated among the system generators, then these generators uh, react according to this frequency regulation characteristic, sometimes referred to as the droop characteristics. And this one determines how much the power output from the generators should increase as the frequency begins to deviate from the nominal frequency. So in this way, if we have many generators operating according to such a scheme, the burden of a disturbance that caused some mismatch in active power is distributed out among the generators in the system. So these were kind of the basic factors. That is the frequency, what influences the power system frequency, and our frequency control. So now we'll turn our focus on how fluctuations in this power imbalance influence the system frequency. And to do that, we will consider these five generator systems. This could be an equivalent of five areas in a power system, in an interconnected power system. The MVA sizes here for the generators, they are similar to one uh, realistic power system scenario. We are using a length mass representation, and the reason for that is that we want to focus on the impact of these fluctuations on the uh, system frequency. So it's very useful to study such simple systems if you want to gain some intuitive understanding of how these short-term fluctuations in active power injection influence the frequency response of the system. So what we need to bear in mind here is that the total rotational energy in the power system, uh, which has n active generating units, can be described uh, by this equation, or this is simply the same as having half times the moment of inertia times the angular velocity squared. And then when we have fluctuations or mismatch in active power, that then will cause either this rotational energy to increase or decrease and hence affect the frequency. So what we will see here are results of a little test where we are applying here uh, in the bottom active power uh, injections. That is, these are disturbances, delta P. So they go from plus 5 megawatts down to minus 5 megawatts. And we have different cases as the frequency of the square waves changes. So we have start by having 2 hertz, 1 hertz, 0.5 hertz, 
and that last zero point one hertz. And what we can observe here is that actually that those fluctuations have a very little effect on the frequency. But as the frequency gets lower, the impact does though increase. So the general observation that we can make here is that the mismatch between the generator generation and load needs to be sustained long enough if the frequency is to be impacted. The lower the frequency of these fluctuations, that means that this positive half period of our square wave uh, is longer. That means that we get greater acceleration of the of the uh, our machine and hence the increase the greater increase in the uh, rotational energy and frequency. Fluctuations of lower frequency maintain the power, uh, power imbalance for a longer period of time, as we can see here. And that is what influences the increase in frequency. So this was a case where we had disabled the frequency control. So this is just a pure inertial response of the system. In the next example, this is an example where we have an active frequency control. And the previous results, they are plotted in gray in the background. And we can see here for the three first cases, we are practically getting the same results as before. While in the last case, where the, we are dealing with 0.1 hertz fluctuation, there we can see that the effect of the frequency control begins to kick in. So we get deviations from the previous results. So our general observation here is that the primary frequency control does practically not react to fluctuations that go from 0 0.5 Hz and upwards. Uh, one of the reasons for that, besides the inertia of the system, is that the governor time constant that we used in this case was 1.75 seconds. But common values for governor time constants are in the range from 1.5 to 2 seconds. All right. Brief summary of what we have been through. Then we know that the generator's uh, kinetic energy can be described by half times the moment of inertia times the angular velocity squared. And that is, the energy uh, has a square relationship with the frequency. A disturbance that causes either a mismatch between the applied mechanical power and the electrical load results in that we have either a deficit or surplus of energy that needs to then be either supplied or stored as kinetic energy uh, in the rotating masses. That is a surplus results in increase of the kinetic energy and hence the frequency, while a deficit causes a decline in frequency. And then in order to ensure a steady frequency, we uh, have frequency control. And this ensures that uh, we re-establish a balance between the mechanical power applied to the generators and the loading in the system. We also saw that the short-term fluctuations in the active power balance have a limited effect on the system frequency. We saw that the frequency needs to be sufficiently low, and the magnet magnitude of the fluctuations need to be significant in order to affect the system frequency and the particularly the frequency control. Then, at last, we cut the learning objectives. So after this lecture, you should now be able to explain why it is of importance to maintain steady frequency in power systems, describe why the frequency in electric power systems may change, and which fundamental equation describe how the frequency changes. You should also be able to explain the basic principles for power system frequency control in power systems and reflect upon how fluctuations in active power injections influence the system inertial response and what kind of fluctuations or which characteristics the fluctuations need to have in order to begin to interfere with the frequency control. Thank you.